Senator Amy Marcos from Ilocos Norte. Can you hear me, ma'am? Yes, I hear you loud and clear all the way to Loag, Ilocos Norte. All right. Okay. Okay. Well, we lost a bit of time. We were uh, hoping to speak with you much longer. Let's start first, ma'am. Of course, um, um, you are tasked to reconcile both the Senate and the House versions. There's only 162 billion pesos of which 140 billion will be ready, readily available, while 22 billion will form a standby fund. Can you explain exactly what this means? Well, sabihin ko na na ako yung dakilang Ilocana, pero ay papano, napakakuripot nitong budget na to. Hirap na hirap kami. There's so much or so little to fight over because uh, it's simply impossible to accommodate everyone's request. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very small fund, 140, oh. of which 50 goes direct to the banks. So already there's uh, one third locked off. And uh, very, very little left to give away to uh, the tourism sectors, the transportation groups, of course, our health workers, which the president has promised, the 15,000 per head, mm -mm. our students, most of all, our OFWs. Ang haba po ng listahan. Kung sinabi nila na kapag maikli ang kumot, bumaluktot, kapag wala ng kumot, tumbling na po. Oo. May nagbago po ba sa mga figures, salimbawa po sa allotments? Binanggit niyo po na ang 50 billion, it will really go to the banks. What about the 10 billion pesos that I think the health department was asking to go to PhilHealth for testing? Matutuloy po ba yun, ma'am? Well, that's uh, still uh, under negotiation. Katakot-takot na uh, tanungan because after all, the uh, PhilHealth has a big fund, a big reserve fund. Uh, it's alleged that the $220 billion that had uh, been saved up there has now been much, much less. Yung investigation kahapon. Pati si Secretary Duque umamin, surrender na rin siya at may corruption talaga at sindikato. Mm -hmm. So it's a real issue. Um, many of us really do not want to uh, give the 10 billion. It's an ako doon. Ayaw ko talaga magdagdag pa ng pera at na nauubos lang. Kung 10 billion na 10 billion lang, ano ba naman ibigay na lang natin sa mga tao na ngailangan, na wala ng trabaho, at uh, na displaced na mga OFW. Where would you want this 10 billion to be allotted to, Senator Marcos, instead of it going to PhilHealth for testing? Because you said may pera naman ang PhilHealth. Well, um, we'd like the 10 billion to uh, go to uh, testing, Department of Health, uh, Department of DND for their efforts in contact tracing, mm. the LGUs and the public works in setting up isolation and quarantine facilities, all these COVID related health activities that we feel are in safer hands, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's a really uh, tricky balance and one that's very, very difficult. Obviously, yung ating uh, congressmen, marami rin uh, inaatupad. Katulad rin namin, may sarili-sarili ito ang kaming mga uh, humingi ng tulong. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, bukod po dyan, no, just to itemize itong 140 billion, Bakit po pa kinailangan na 140 ang readily available? Why set aside the 22 billion, Senator, as a standby fund? What is the logic of setting that aside? Well, uh, there is really no logic as such. It's more like a prayer. Um, the 140 billion we've been assured by the Secretary of Finance and all our money managers is available. And na yan, so sigurado tayo dyan. Ang problema, yung uh, house at uh, kami, hindi talaga mapagkasya sa dami-dami ng request. So we put aside 22, perhaps even 26 mm -hmm. as a standby provision. Okay. So if you get really lucky, makajakpat tayo at uh, makapipid, for example, from the different sources of funds, mm -hmm. such as uh, the debt interest payments, mm -hmm. naman they will be less because we always apportion them. For example, we can get from uh, 2020 budget, according to me at least, uh, I don't think anyone traveled. So all the travel expenses, mm -hmm. the training mm -hmm. expenses, for example, which can be postponed for a better time. Mm -hmm. All these things, kung natin at ibigay na natin sa tao bilang tulong sa panahong ito. 
Mm -mm. Okay. All right. On another aspect, I wanted to ask you, there's $10 billion for workers in tourism enterprises. And Congressman Rufus Rodriguez is asking that the $10 billion intended for TIESA be given directly to the DOT. Apparently, the House version is allocates it to TIESA, not it's unlike the Senate version. Can you expound on that? Are you still giving $10 billion to the DOT? Well, malaking chismis yan, ano? Kasi there's been a lot of wrangling within uh, Congress. Uh, Mesa reeling dynamic sila. For me, for me personally, I know that the tourism sector has been the longest hit. Mm. December pa, wala nang dumarating na Chinese tourists sa Cebu, sa Ilocos. Hirap na hirap na talaga pati Boracay. Mm. As a result, uh, this has been a very long, long period of unemployment and no income. So, yun nga, ang gusto ko sana, 3 billion at least should be added to the support for those who become jobless. Okay. And it's very, very important that we give $6 billion, as requested, um, to the tourism enterprises. Yung small and medium na talagang naghihikaw sa mga restaurant, okay. bar, uh, beachside resorts, and so on. Okay. So yung $10 billion, to be specific, you wanted it that $3 billion, no, $6 billion goes to... Ah, uh, itong mga small Bauta. tourism enterprises, yung 3 billion, saan po siya ulit, Senator Imi? Gusto ko diretsong payout na, social protection, subsidies for those who have lost their jobs, have had no income coming, the freelancers, the okay. tour guides, the self-employed, all of them who really depend on tourism because it's been such a long time mm -hmm. that uh, there have been no tourists coming through. Okay, all right. And then there's still... Yung remaining one billion, para wala nang away, para may tourism infrastructure pa rin, because after all, we do need tourism infrastructure. To my mind, um, it's important to have pedestrian and biking lanes, given that uh, transport has become such an issue. And uh, so I think there's a need for tourism infrastructure. It also compromises the economy, like all infrastructure does. Yung one billion, para wala nang away, BPWH, total sila naman talaga experts sa construction. Ba, okay. Now, 15 billion for cash for work program in communities. How would this be implemented and is it still at 15 billion, Senator? Yes, uh, hindi na bawasan na eh. I'm uh, actually completely dismayed oh. by the cash for work support, the support for impacted sectors. Apakapayat, nakahanap pa rin kami. Kasi konting konti to, lahat ng dataing na, as we know, uh, there are horrific projections for our OFWs. Nakakatakot, hundreds of thousands are coming back jobless and perhaps ill. So that's a real issue. Uh, nakakahabag yung transport sector natin na naglilimus na itong makikisig at no. ang sisipag ng mga tatay ng pamilya. So, we're hoping to restore the 15 billion. Pero ikang na, wala nang pagpunan. Uh, hopefully, we can get something in the standby provision. I see. So, yung cash for work program in communities, so far in your bike, magkano po ngayon ang nakalaan, Senator? Sabihin ko totoo, nasa 5 billion na lamang. Tapos yung 2 billion, nasa standby pa. Talagang kakarambot to. It's not going to last a week. I'm absolutely terrified. Yeah. Seriously speaking. Oo. Oh, oh. Eh, paano po itong 17 billion for the DOTR to assist workers who have lost their jobs? Nandun pa po ba yun, Senator? Naku, natastas na yan. Talaga naman, waglit-waglit na. Nasa 6 billion, tapos standby 1 billion. Ang dami ko ng kodi, din ko na mapasa. Sa totoo lang, puros pula-pula na ito na XX na. So hopefully today, I don't know. May himala. At sabi nga ni Nora, yeah. Nor, hindi walang himala. Dapat merong himala. At uh, bagsakan tayo na napakaraming pera. Yeah. I understand where um, our finance people are coming from. They're uh, trying to impose prudent uh, fiscal management. But on the other hand, ito nga, talagang ang hirap-hirap talagang pagkasahin, pati middle class, pati yung mga dating employed, pati may-ari ng negosyo. Lahat humihingi ng tulong. Hirap yeah. talaga. 
Okay. Well, the figures you're giving us now are quite surprising. So just for news purposes, I don't want to get anything wrong. The 15 billion for cash on work has now gone to 5 billion. 17 billion for DOTR assistance has gone down to 6 billion. Meron pa po bang 15 billion to direct cash subsidy, interest-free loans uh, to farmers, fishermen, livestock, plant, plant, plant. Buhay pa po ba yun, Senator? Buhay pa! Buhay pa rin, pero okay. ito nga, kinatikatay na. Talagang na-chop-chop-chop lahat kasi we've tried to accommodate as much as we can. The President has promised 15,000 to our health workers. There have been promises also to our teachers, which is obviously something we need to do. And uh, lahat ta uh, humihingi ng tulong to publish the uh, lessons, the lesson plans that will now have to be distributed per child. Uh, and there's simply no money in the local governments or in the local decad to print all these materials, as well as uh, beef up their Wi-Fi. FFI is struggling with Wi-Fi. Um, it's sort of ironic. And at the same time, make sure that there's a place where the kids can actually access these yeah. lessons online. Oh, oh, so you're trying to tell us even the online materials are part of this 140 billion senator? Hindi can ba you believe this? Yes, can you believe this? Even the best uh, budget conscious housewives like us are going to have a really tricky time. Yes, they're included. The production of all the uh, um, printed material, online material, broadcast material for TV and radio lessons. Can you imagine? Lahat yung pinagsisik-sik-sik-sik talaga namin dyan. Pagkahirap-hirap. Maawa ako sa chairman namin, si Chairman Sunny Angara, and for the house panel chairman el rey yeah okay and are you still setting we aside have, yeah and dito habana listahan ko may development for smart campuses test the scholarship for training and retraining dsw for individuals in crisis yung mga namatayan na po assistance to lgus na kailangan magpatayo ng isolation units hiring of contact tracers na hinihingi ng dalg ang menu namin papahaba-haba Oh, oh. So, lahat po yun, ang total has to be 140 billion only. That's correct. Okay. And then we are giving um, a uh, standby provision for the president. Like I said, if you pray really hard, a great big miracle falls in our laps and we get an extra 22, 26 billion from, uh, I don't know, perhaps uh, debt servicing, at least dun sa interest na inalokit. Baka makapipid tayo, humingi tayo ng tulong. At, uh, for example, in our present budget, uh, delete all the travel expenses. Wala naman magka-travel. Yung training, pwede ba ipospone? All these things that we can think of. And how much do you think, Senator Aimee, would that amount to pag tinanggal po lahat yun sa budget ng gobyerno? I'm hopeful that this will be a substantial amount. Of course, uh, our money managers and the finance department is very hesitant about a debt moratorium. Although, to my mind, that's been offered. Inalok na yun eh, ng mga nagpapausang. The G20 has spoken, the IMF has spoken, that this year, we just roll over to next year. Kunting palugid lang naman. Hindi naman tayo manunuba. Pagbayaran natin at pagbayaran pa rin. But will our credit ratings change, for example, example, if we take the debt moratorium? Yes, um, that is a big concern, but I think at this point in time, every, everyone's credit ratings are back, will come crashing down. Hopefully that's not the case for us. Our fundamentals, as they like to say, are rock solid. So there's really no reason. On the other hand, mas important sa akin kesa sa credit rating, sa totoo lang, yung buhay ng tao. Kasi mm -hmm. nakikita ko na Mm -mm. All right. Now, I wanted to ask you, today is the first day uh, of GCQ in NCR. What are your Akala thoughts? the first day of the first day of ghost month for the Chinese. Uh, GCQ. The so I, I wanted to ask you your thoughts. I mean, you have two sides, health experts that wanted to extend MECQ. And you also have economists that say, well, of course, the... The, the finance secretary is one in Malacanang saying we can't afford it anymore. I want to get your thoughts on that first. Well, I think we don't need to 
think of it as a conflict or as a balancing of interest. I think we need to learn to live with the virus, as many of the very successful countries have, and just undertake the precautions that all our doctors have told us we need to do. Social distancing, the face masks, um, the avoidance of crowded places. I think we need to uh, really follow these very, very strictly. In fairness, sa totoo lang, uh, hindi ako naniniwala na pasaway ang Pilipino. Sumusunod naman tayo sa face mask. Bakit takot na lang natin. Mm. The problem is the great inequity in space yeah. for those who yeah. are much wealthier and those who are poorer. Yeah. It is said that an average of two meters is all that the informal settler in the crowded areas of Metro Manila have. Or in Cebu, ang sikip-sikip, wala pang dalawang metro, paano nga naman mag-physical distancing? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Pag ganun po, ano ang magandang sinabi po ninyo yon? Kasi no less than Secretary Anyo at one point said kahit sa bahay, dapat mag-mask and practice social distancing at home. And he was criticized by some netizens uh, saying paano po yung bahay namin, napakaliit, paano kami mag-social distancing. Uh, what do you make of, of, of that recommendation by Secretary Anyo? And how would you do it? How, what advice would, would be doable in situations like that? Yes, um, I think uh, Secretary Anu is only taking the advice of our doctors. So he's merely echoing what the scientists have really told us. And unfortunately, the poor guy is sick again as a result of uh, working too hard. And um, ang masasabi ko, siguro, we have to have some creative uh, um, solutions mm. to this shortage in space. Kami, uh, ino open up namin yung mga public spaces, yung mga public auditoriums, yung mm ating mga uh, public sports stadiums, okay. mga ganyan, e buksan na natin kung ano man yung mga hotel tulad nga ng ginagawa ng ibang uh, siyudad. Let's just open them up and uh, accept that the reality is uh, part of poverty in this multifaceted, multidimensional problem is really a poverty in space din. Mm -mm. Kasi hindi lang cash ang kulang, kasi lugar. Oo. Now, I wanted to ask you, as we move towards GCQ, uh, doctors asked for a time out of two weeks and it was supposed to build the health capacity with this 140 billion peso budget. Clearly, it's not enough to build our health capacity. Senator Marcos, how much would we need, if I were to ask you, to build the health capacity? Pay for nurses, well, frontliners, hospital beds, etc., etc. Aminin na natin, ang totoo, Wala tayong maayos na healthcare sa Pilipinas. There's simply no reliable, accessible, quality healthcare in the Philippines. And it takes decades to build. And we've been very, very remiss in not investing in healthcare. And now suddenly that uh, we're all crying for doctors and nurses, we realize this. We have this really shocking statistic oh. that we are killing our doctors. We're not able to protect those who are supposed to protect our lives. This is really shocking. In other countries, maybe 2% of the doctors get infected. But here in the Philippines, we're talking about 13 15% getting sick because they have no PPEs, they have no masks. We're simply exposing them without giving them any defenses. Ito talaga ang hindi katanggap-tanggap. So, ito na, how much will we need? Much too much indeed because we're catching up. It's a terrible catch-up game which we're destined to lose. So, uh, I think this is one thing that uh, we le learn from uh, COVID. And sabi nga nila, don't waste a crisis. And truly, let's not let the crisis of COVID go to, waste, go to waste and instead rest the opportunity of finally building a proper universal health care system for the Philippines. Ganun din sa edukasyon. Uh, nakita natin wala tayong matinong digital infrastructure. Mm. So now we're so dependent on that and online education is on the lips of every single one from teachers to parents to children who are longing to go back to school. Yeah. And yeah. let's 
take this opportunity. Wag na natin sabihin crisis. This crisis and grab the opportunity, convert it so that we can finally give ourselves a decent uh, Wi-Fi and digital setup. Okay. Pero natanggap na po ba ng Senado, for example, nung Bayanihan 1, I think 75 billion was allotted right to the Department of Health. Have they actually accounted for, Senator Marcos, where they spent the $75 billion? Yes, there's been uh, some kind of accounting, but uh, given that we've required them to report every week, uh, you know, consolidate, I'm not sure completely. It's a little bit slow. And when we get to the executive, they're working full-time. Then they have to report to us every week. It's uh, The numbers are not all in, but you can be sure that we will go through them with a fine-tooth comb. Um, as we said, this started as a health crisis. It's now become an economic problem. And we don't want it to proceed to become a social problem. Uh, the advice of all the economists, is that we go fast, we go big, we go hard. But uh, yun nga, yung 140 is uh, very, very small. Mm. But um, given that Bill Gates says that this will carry on until the end of next year, yeah. talagang mm. kailangan hinay-hina yung paglabas ng pera rin, inot-inot, para mm. makakapot mm. dun sa next year na sinasabi. Oo. You've seen also proposals coming from the lower house and also the Senate, that's, uh, in the House, it's uh, Congresswoman Kimbo. In the Senate, there's a version from Senator Recto of uh, stimulus packages amounting to one trillion split in three years. Is that something you believe that the country needs even if we can't afford it? Yes, I uh, also filed a similar uh, bill okay. for uh, economic stimulus. Hindi nga stimulus ang pinag-uusapan eh. Social protection lamang, wala pang recovery. Mm -hmm. Tapos yung stimulus, malayo-layo pa tayo. I estimated it to be 725 this year. Okay. And um, that's actually what I filed. And it's quite similar to uh, to uh, Ralph Rectos. And uh, Stella Kimbo, of course, being the real economist among us, yeah, yeah. Um, has um, staggered it over a period of three years. But um, uh, the economic managers are very wary of yeah. promising great sums at this point, uh, given that even our tax collection have, uh, the collections have really uh, slumped. Mm -mm, mm -mm. All right. I'm curious, uh, in the BICAM, are there proposals that have been adopted in Bayanihan 2 that can revive and, uh, and, oh, and open the economy? I mean, one interesting thing is uh, uh, the BICAM, you've uh, agreed to suspend certain permits to fast track the construction of cell towers. So that, that's quite promising. Are, are there yes, that's any right. Yeah. That's right. That's a very good provision, yes. and it follows the uh, the mandate of the president that uh, we should expedite. But I come from the LDU sector, and uh, I was a governor for a good long time. It's not always the issue of our local government sitting on it. Some sometimes there's simply a lack of dialogue. For example, uh, we had these issues with uh, Power Church and uh, Globe Telecom, and I'm hopeful that uh, the local governments are are also consulted in spite of all this we are not always the cause of delay very often we try to expedite this because after all so for three years we've all agreed that every local government should expedite but i beseech the telcos to also please consult all the lgus because sometimes there are real problems okay another thing what about the proposed loan moratorium what's the final decision sa bicam uh, senator marcos this is the loan moratorium para sa ating international debt uh, no uh, or uh, this is, or uh, is this para sa agrarian reform na pinipilit ko? Pinipilit ko sa there's, I think there's a few, no? There's a, there's a proposed one-year loan moratorium under Bayanihan 2 
that I think some have asked to make it just a maximum of 60 days? Oh, that's right. That's right. Our poor banking sector, already beleaguered yeah. by so many non-paying loans, yeah. uh, have said that if one year they will not pay, they will go belly up and it will be deadly for the economy. That's entirely understandable. The Senate version was 30 days, uh. but I think we've come to a compromise that 60 days should be all. Um, the Bayanian 2 will only be until December 31 in any case. Ba-o. So talagang sakto lang yung 60 days at uh, wala nang paulit-ulit kasi hindi daw kaya talaga ng mga banko natin magpakagulo. So this is one thing. I'd like to put a pitch for the other moratorium I'm talking yes. about. Go ahead. Which is for the agrarian reform beneficiaries. Yes. These are our subsistence and smallest farmers who don't even own their land. So uh, in, uh, uh, in and, uh, 20- and this is now on third reading. That's correct. Uh, this is final, and uh, today at 10 o'clock, we should be having another bike up. Uh-uh. I'm hoping ito na, na ito na yung final na meeting na mga mar- marathon session to. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And I'm hopeful that we can at least waive the interest of our farmers. Alam naman natin, alam pang baya, doon na natin pigain. We are actually spending much more trying to collect in admin costs, in DAR efforts, in land bank yeah. efforts. How, how, much, these how much are we talking about? Senator Marcos, do you have um, an estimate? Halimbawa, sabihin natin 6 billion on due taon-taon. Yeah. Ang nababayaran lang, 600 million. Ah. Sa totoo lang. Ang ginagastos ng land bank, pag itagdag mo lahat ng agrarian reform effort nila, nasa 1.1 billion. Mm-hmm. Pero pa, yung sa DAR budget, isipin mo, we're spending much more than we're collecting. Yeah. This is madness. Yeah, yeah. All right. Before we go, I mean, it's it's quite sad that we weren't able to fix the signal because we were going to discuss so many things with you. But let's talk about joblessness. 45.5% of the labor co- uh, force. This is a record high for the Philippines. That's the SWS survey. 27.3 million unemployed. And you actually have a recommendation, and it's quite interesting. I, I want to hear this. And how how do you suggest we pump prime the economy right now uh, to employ the hardest hit sectors? What would you do at this point with COVID out there? Yes, uh, the numbers are tragic. They're nothing short of uh, uh, disastrous. Uh, uh, the human cost in terms of the families and uh, the uh, fathers and mothers who are unable to work is uh, just a complete and utter human disaster. So, para sa akin, dapat magkaroon tayo ng real, complete job policy. Yun mm-hmm. ang inaantay ko. Pag okay. naririnig ko si President, sa totoo lang, I'm totally inspired and bang-ho. The next day, in uh, the cold, clear light of the next day, I hear all these instructions about face shields and barriers. Pwede ba ang isipin natin, bigyan ng trabaho ang lahat. Oh, so I have to a bill, yung uh, trabaho sa panahon, sa oras ng pandemia. Um, I think the example has been um, the uh, the work brigades of uh, President uh, Franklin Roosevelt during the Great Depression when the government itself started hiring everyone to build this enormous uh, infrastructure project. And curiously, even the creative sector were employed, such as Saul Bellow, Richard Wright, all of these authors that we know uh, very well today. And they were employed to write, for example, tourist brochures and uh, other yeah. Americana. In our case, yeah. we clearly need all the media reporters and stringers who've lost their jobs, all of our uh, creatives to help the deaf ed, for example, to put online, to put okay. on television and radio the lessons of the kids. So I think government must do more, okay. must intervene as the biggest employer. All right. Uh, ma'am, I just want to make Pahabal one question, but I still have four minutes of the commercial, so I need to go. Do it, do should it. should <laughs> President Duterte already replace Ricardo Morales? Should they appoint someone else already? 
Well, I think there needs to be a caretaker. Um, um, still health is huge. It's arguably the biggest dispensing uh, GOCC. It's important that we have someone in charge. I'm hopeful that the caretaker will be appointed ASAP. There are many qualified doctors. There are even uh, in-house uh, people who are very, very competent. It's important that they do it ASAP. And perhaps uh, enjoin or outsource the ID issue, which is the source of corruption. The SSS, bakit hindi naman nagkaka problema sa million million of members? Pwedeng gawin natin yun o i-outsource sa third party kaya galing-galing ng ating mga Pilipino. So, uh, uh, I'm hopeful for still health because we can't afford to have this uh, crisis in the middle of this pandemic. All right. Senator Aimee Marcos, thank you so much for your time this morning. I hope that next time, better signal. Thank you so thank much, ma'am. Thank you very ma much. And this interview is the best argument for uh, digital expenditure. <laughs> thank you so much. Senator Aimee Marcos, live from Ilocos Norte.